Hey, there it is. All right. Oh, look, and not a single light. Fantastic. This is ridiculous. Oh, uh, so let's start with this. We got hacked. Welcome back to the Late Night Playset. My name is Jay Ryan. Nicole Ryan here. Uh, we'll be talking to you in just a few minutes. We have our buddy Marco Girassi from TLG in the house. We're going to be talking about how you can get your car some TLC in the new year and all about the great hack of 2021. Uh, that's right. The Instagrams, all of the Instagrams, the Facebooks, all of the Facebooks. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what we did or who did it. We were up at uh, Breakfast Club, but we're going to tell you the story. Uh, there's a lot to catch up on, including what the hell happened to the Porsche Life 111 account. Uh, late night play set, if it still exists, starts right now. <laughs> You trim your beard. You look great. And he did a shave. Everybody looks great. Welcome back, Mrs. Ryan. <laughs> Let's kill the echo here. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff to talk about this evening. Um, starting with the great hack, of course. Welcome back to you, everybody. Welcome back at home. Welcome back on YouTube, which is the only thing that I know is actively working as it used to last week. Um, hmm. uh, I don't know what's else happening. Normally, I can share that into there, but it's not there, and I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> 5C Club. What's up, Gurk2? Irville official. What's Irville? Nice to see you, Irville. The Tuman Show. What's the Tuman Show? <laughs> How's everybody doing? Oh, gosh. All right. Tonight is Tuesday. Well, first of all, do we sound any different? I think we might sound a little bit different because we are working with a new mixer. A new mixer. We're borrowing a mixer over there to see how we like it because our mixer that we had uh, been using forever, we used it too much. We used it enough, and it, uh, it it's no longer working as well as it used to. Um, so we got a bigger mixer that we're borrowing, and um, if we like it, we're going to solicit uh, a new mixer from somebody at, at there at home or start up a GoFundMe or something. I don't know. Here, I'm, <laughs> I'll be better when I can turn these lights on here. Let me put these... Let me put these Red lights on for the missus here, and that way we know where to look when we're talking to you. <sighs> a little out of sorts. A little out of sorts tonight. I'm so happy to be back, but I don't, I feel, this feels like a hack show because it's not, it's <laughs> we not, are not operating at our full capacity. Not complete. Not because I'm here. No, not because you're here. You're awesome. <laughs> oh you're God. fantastic. <laughs> yeah. No, you're. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. <laughs> 
appreciate it. No, it's good. Feels a little hacky tonight. I can't quite tell why. <laughs> it's definitely not, not our guest, not our guest. Ugh, there's part of the problem. Look at that. We'll get to the wide. Okay, now we'll put the light on that. All this stuff was set up before the show, and then Marco showed up a half an hour early, and then we started shooting the shit, and then we started the podcast before we started recording the podcast, and here we are. Did I tell you what night it is? Did I tell you what day it is? It started to. It's Tuesday, December 14th, 2021. My name is Jay Ryan. This lady to my right is Nicole Ryan. It's Tradecraft Tuesday. I opened this for you ahead to try to save time. Here's uh, some sticky vape for you. I appreciate it. I still need to do it for everybody else. It's um, creme brulee, and it's from our friends at Sticky Vape. Our friends and neighbors across the way there in the downtown artist district. Sticky Vape. Sticky Vape. The Tradecraft Farms family. And um, creme brulee is an indica. And that's all the information I have here. But this is a sticky pen. Remember the sticky sauce pen, which I guess was a little more punchy in the face. It is. And that I can taste the fully very strong. <laughs> what? <laughs> I can taste the flavor. I can't usually taste things. So. Oh, can I smell it? Yeah. Can, does it? Oh, geez, why am I over here? Sorry. Does it actually smell like creme brulee? Or taste like creme brulee? Yeah. It doesn't really smell like it. No, I mean I believe it tastes like it. I, I couldn't tell from the smell. Uh, ninety-one. <laughs> Did I read that right? Ninety-one point oh seven four percent THC. <laughs> well, that's what you need, though. You need the high THC for your MS. Yeah. <clears throat> Which doesn't make sense because it seems like, oh, they, people want to load you up with the CBD, but that actually doesn't do much for you. And in some cases, when you were eating the gummies, it kind of turned your stomach. Because to make the gummies taste good, they have to put so much of their shit in it that oh. it's like not good for you. So you're better off just getting the straight thing from yeah. the plant and everything. Yeah. Or or a, something like this where it's... Totally, and the pens that high level are just so clean. That's why they're good for maintenance and maintaining. Oh, is that right? Oh, I guess it would have to if it's got a percentage this high. It would have to be super c clean and. Uh, what am I thinking of? What do you what do you call that when it's uh, <laughs> when it's not cut with other things? <laughs> Un unfiltered, yeah, concentrated, unfiltered, undiluted. Undiluted, Undiluted. Yeah. Pure, yeah. Very pure, very straight, very orchestrated. It's good for that. Oh, man. All right, so there you go. Here's your commercial for Tradecraft Farms. Carissable is here. Thank you, Carissable. Oh, we love you. Chris has a camera's here. Andrew McD. Hello. <laughs> SBD23, hello. All right. New mixer. I think we're doing well. I'm really excited about it because we have more inputs. We have this tiny little studio here, right? And little by little, we've been increasing everything to be like actual production stuff. And the little YouTube Amazon mixer wasn't really cutting it. Now we have an actual, like a real production, actual mixer. <clears throat> and what I'm trying to say is now we have more inputs. And for the first time ever, for the first time since the 90s, has anybody heard this sound? I can hear it. It's amazing. For the first time, for the first time ever, this microphone is actually wired up. All of the years I've owned it, literally owned it. <laughs> That's questionable. All the years it's been in my possession. <laughs> I heard it. Everyone, I heard it. That's good, right? Uh, all the years it's been in my possession, I have never uh, wired it up. There was never a reason to. I mean, I didn't have my little talk show desk here and everything throughout life. It was just always on a shelf. As a point of pride and shame, you know what I mean? Um, and, uh, you know, now we got the inputs, and I, there's a whole, everything's, you wouldn't know this uh, unless you had a, a talk show desk, but, like, there's all this stuff back here to run the wires and everything. So it just felt like, well, if we have the ability to do it, why in the hell wouldn't we actually do it? And uh, I'm really excited. I'm really excited. I can't believe it still works. I really thought, I, I didn't think it would still this, this is an old ribbon mic from the 50s, right? This is an insanely delicate piece of equipment. Like if you, you know how normally, like you blow into a mic? If you did that to this, you would you would ruin it. You would wreck it. You would have to be re-ribboned. That's how sensitive they are. And uh, I guess I've taken really good care of it over the years. Because <laughs> it still do. works. Yeah. I can, it's so crisp. It's a different sound. It's pretty cool. Sony, it's stupid. It's stupid. It's awesome. That's right. I, I stole you your ability to hear that sound years and years ago. But, of course, I was one of the only people who actually gave a shit about it anyway. So, um, 
And then I think I told you this, that um, there was always, there was that weird um, CIA guy that came to me at my dad's funeral that hid behind the tree and he goes, no, you don't need to worry about all this stuff and crazy. And he was like, and he goes, you just go ahead and take uh, Letterman's microphone because one day, I think that was actually me in the future. He's going, oh, you're going to have this desk and everything and you're going to want that microphone. T too much? Too deep? All no, right. I love that. I'm a time traveler. Didn't remember all <laughs> Remember, that. I built this too. There's got to be a reason I'm attracted to all this crazy shit. Um, anyway, so this mixer, I think, we, uh, I think we're going to like it. And if we're going to like it, then we're going to need one. And if we're going to need one, we're going to solicit one. So uh, <laughs> keep an eye out for one of those things on there that, uh, hey, uh, Santa, if anybody's listening, we're looking for one of these. And I'll just put it in the Amazon cart. Um, I, I did that as a joke the other day with the Ghostbusters book. The, the new Ghostbusters movie has a companion book, the making of the movie or whatever. And uh, I put a, I, I, I saw that I just became aware of it. And so I saw the thing and I put it up, ah, if anybody's listening, Secret Santa or whatever. And I put it up there. And some guy, a follower of ours, somebody we know, I think, from Breakfast Club, um, said, hey, I, 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 why did you laugh? Do you really want this or no? And I was like, no, I'm, I'm, I laughed because I really do want it. <laughs> I think it's funny that I actually want this stupid thing. And he goes, oh, well, I would like to get it for you, whatever. So uh, super, super generous, this person. And when it arrives, I will thank them on the air and we'll look at it. Um, but anyway, once I saw that that worked, I was like, well, geez, we've gotten cameras here from different people. We've got Will on camera three there, and we've got Hank on camera four. Those were uh, both donated to the show. If you would like to be our audio guy and want to spend in the neighborhood of four or $500 on a mixer uh, this holiday season, you could be our guy. Get in touch. Speaking of Sunroof Delete, he's right here. We just had a whole big conversation about him before the show. Hello, Sunroof Delete. He waved. That tradecraft hitting hard, eh? Is it? Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not having any. This is just how I am. <laughs> no, that's her. Sean Lee's here. Hi, guys. Hi, Sean Lee. So the other thing was, <clears throat> now that we've talked about the mixer, and we'll talk about the great hack which led into the weekend that we were stressed about all the different stuff we had to do and how we ended up not doing a single bit of it. <laughs> we ended up staying here at home all weekend. Uh, energy was a little low after GVBC on Friday and nothing really aligned. It was one of those, it felt like Pee Wee's Big Adventure. You know, when he goes and it gets the little horoscope in the morning, he's like, you should not leave the house today, but he does anyway. And then his whole life gets fucked up. Um, we kind of just, we decided to, heed the warning and it just felt like um energetically it, it was just going to be too much and i didn't want to push you too hard you were willing to go that's that's really important she was willing to go to at least some of that stuff and uh and i wasn't willing to push you it just didn't feel right to me so it was me i pulled the plug on things um but i i feel badly because we really wanted to do all those things one of which was with you up at uh up at the beverly Glen. That one will happen again. I'm not worried about that. Uh, the big one was Sean Lee and the Purist Group, uh, the Winter Drive. Obviously, we did a, a you know a pop up toy drive at the Breakfast Club, so we've participated in that. It's not like we had to be there, but uh, really wanted to be. And Lisa Taylor's holiday party really wanted to go to that. We ended up not going. And then uh, Andrew Florence Brentwood Country Mart thing. That was is is always a really great thing, and uh, we didn't do that either. So literally all day we had a whole day budgeted, and uh, what we ended up doing was spending some time on the floor with the shades drawn, and uh, the Christmas candles going, and watching Christmas movies and stuff all weekend. And I think that was much better for you. Yes, I mean I miss everyone and doing all that stuff, but I love the floor and our movie time. <laughs> That's honest. I really kind of love that time that we have doing that. You never know. It's, um, you know, we talk about our old life a lot. And in our old life, you were really on the move. We were both on the move quite a bit before we met. But when I met you, I realized that I was never on the move. You were truly, I mean, traveling 40 weeks a year with all these different people, celebrities, famous people, running their lives and their schedules and and everybody that was part of their lives you were you were you were part of I, I just don't know how you did all of that and then it brings me to i was talking to marco about this right before we started the show today it brings me to our today life and i'm sick of saying oh our old life used to be blah, 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 blah. i'm ready for this life to be whatever or we should stop talking about it the same way or start thinking about it in a new way or whatever Every time I say, oh, our old life used to be whatever, it's like, it's always so grandiose. In the good old days, and it's like we're so struggling now. But 
there's so many things I would never give back from that old to, to get back some of the things that we liked about it. There was so much shit I would never, ever, ever put up with again. Same. And I'm so grateful for where we are now that I know that once this all kind of takes off and whatever, we're going to be okay. And your org, once we get your .org off in 2022, everybody, um, I think that's going to be huge for you because then you'll have stuff to work on every day. Yes. It'll keep my brain active. Yeah, you're the best. So that's what happened this, this weekend. The hack is the hack. Um, we were up at Breakfast Club on Friday. And having one of the best breakfast clubs in a while. It's mm -hmm. been amazing lately. The people who have been showing up have been just fantastic, great energy. Um, people seem to kind of get what we're all doing up there, you know, and, and, and people aren't coming up trying to ruin it. And it's really great. And one of the people who came this week was um, Reggie Watts. You guys know him from the James Corden show, The Late Late Show? Love He's that. the musical director, band leader guy, um, and an, a very incredible comedian and musician in his own right. Um, and he came up and he's a big Porsche guy and he hit his 992 and he's, I guess he's got a Macan as well, but he's got a Turbo S on order. <laughs> he's a Porsche guy. <laughs> um, well, we just, we, you know, I'm a late night talk show guy. So we buddied up and we just hung out the whole time and he's going to do the show. And, um, and it was really, really great. And I was so excited to get to the bottom of the hill and tell all of you about it and show that, you know, put the, the videos and the pictures and everything else. And when we got down to signal the first thing i did notice was an email from somebody who normally contacts me through other uh channels and saying hey i can't get you through whatever the heck i hope everything is okay blah 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 and i thought oh that's weird i'll deal with it when i get home when we got home we saw the great hack of 2021 <laughs> it seems to be now what Catherine delorean over here said a few minutes ago because it's a variety of accounts she said oh it's because you shared a password i think she might be right However, it seems that that's not actually what happened. <laughs> it seems that what happened was the Facebook account got hacked. And I, this, none of this is verified, but that's what it seems from the amount of investigation I've done, was that the Facebook account got hacked. Again, I'm sure the issue is the password with me and the <coughs> lack of two-factor authentication. But because whatever was posted or done with my account once it was hacked was so bad that they shut it down, they shut down all of the... Uh, connected Instagram accounts with it. So when I go to sign into Instagram, it, it, now, it didn't say this the other day, but now it says, uh, talk to Facebook because uh, it comes through Facebook. <laughs> you were deactivated. Oh, All your man. accounts were deactivated through Facebook because your Facebook was deactivated. Oh. Now it goes even deeper because, of course, the email I used for Facebook, Facebook, everybody, it will be Friendster or Classmates.com, uh, it's literally an email from when I worked at Paramount Pictures. <laughs> Whenever I joined that fucking thing, 2005, uh, I'm guessing, probably. It was Everybody Hates Christie's, maybe 2007 at the latest. So I'm pretty sure that email isn't good anymore, and I haven't really needed it because everything's just you know saved on your phone or whatever. You want to log in? Yeah, log in. Um, so I think that's eh, whatever. I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of strikes against us, and we're definitely trying to get there. But I I don't I don't know I don't know. A lot of people are helping us. I'll tell you that. Um, and in fact, I should give some thanks out there. Magnus Walker was the first one to reach out. He put me in touch with um, uh, uh, who the hell did I say before? Oh, Damon Jones. Damon, hmm. is that right? I think so. And then uh, and then Damon put me in touch with uh, Dimitri over at BBI, who's got a guy, and everybody seems to have a guy, and a bunch of different guys are working on it. Nobody can guarantee anything, but they're like, eh, wait a couple of days, let us know. <laughs> you might get an email to reset. If you do, you're good. <laughs> like, great. <laughs> in the meantime. That's awesome. In like, the you never know. In the meantime, please go follow the real J Ryan 111. <laughs> <laughs> I don't normally get, um, like, I don't normally deal with the paranoid thing. I'm like such a positive thinker that I just build the best case scenario and work towards that. But when I do get a little bit paranoid, I think to myself, boy, I made a comment on the show like mm, a couple times lately that like somebody went up and 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 intentionally uh, like parked all of anything that's not Porsche Life 111, J. Ryan 111, The J. Ryan 111, Good Vibes 111, like anything that could possibly ever be us has all been parked by somebody. You could, there's no posts. There's no nothing. They never respond to messages. They're just like you can't get them anymore. And then – they took out the Porsche life. And I'm like, 
Are they trying to silence me? Is that it? Am I that important? Am I that important? They're trying to keep me quiet. <laughs> I don't get very far down that thinking every time. I want to be that important, but I don't think I actually am. I'm pretty sure it's just a, like you said, a Facebook. Uh, uh, remember years that you, uh, like it happened with our insurance company or like it happened with the credit cards company. Somebody just like, there's these big hacks, right? Like at, at wherever, call it William Sonoma, right? And then the, everybody's passwords from William Sonoma get get public, right? Now, so everyone has those passwords. Most people are like me, where they use the same fucking password for it. Yep. So then you just plug that password into everything, everything, and then eventually you get stuff. When I was a kid, it was garage door remotes. You remember you would just drive, not you would, but like they, they the, the bad guys, would drive around the neighborhood just click and click and click. And, oh. and eventually, every 200 houses or whatever, it would fucking open, right? Because like there's only so many, there's only so many things. In the old days, anyway. I remember that, too. What a weird thing. So it's been a fucking hassle. If I feel like, if I, if I seem like I just got deflated, I didn't want to tell you any of that. And I had to tell you all of that. <laughs> I, I want to just get back on with the show. We were, we had some good momentum going here. We've got some great guests coming up, though. I should say that. And then we've got a great guest here today who will be in here in just a few minutes. Uh, let's see. Damon Jones is going to be here on Thursday. Uh, Adam Ferrar is going to be here in 2022. Greg Grunberg again in 2022. Uh, Lieberman, 2022. Motor and Club, 2022. Reggie Watch, 2022. Chris Cluel from uh, Overcrest, 2022. Pretty good. And Sean Cridlin was here yesterday, or Thursday, and that was great. So it's good stuff. A lot of good people coming up. Still working on Dave, by the way. Still working on Letterman. That is an active pursuit. She Spawn says, Chewy.com, I like to take my dog to the park on Saturday. Oh, I see. Use a passphrase specific to the site, then take the first letter of each word. Chewy.com. I like to take my dog to the park on Saturday. Keep up. <laughs> Sebastian says, keep up the momentum. We're all here for it. Spread the word as much as possible. Thank you, Sebastian. I'm so grateful for all of you. I can't believe there are 15 people here when there are, I mean, that's 10% of our whole following right now is here. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Marco's like, you know, when I booked this, you had a, you had, there's a few more people. Oh, wow. I got this thing. I got go. He's running out of time. Yeah. His agent oh. just called. He's pulling him right now. <laughs> oh. oh, Marco. All right. So let's see. What do we get here? Did I mention that? Yeah. <laughs> That's not going to go. It's funny because I don't give a crap up here. We have this too, but I never do it. I don't give a crap. It takes me too long to figure it out. That's why I got this. <laughs> yep. Marco didn't hear it because it was down here. Ready? Well, that one I actually hit the damn camera. Um, but we no, but we never we never actually do. Uh, that just seems a little too much. But like the occasional tap. Pretty good, and you can just do that. How many times do you think that mic's been tapped? So have you seen it? <laughs> That's why I stole it because I didn't think it was the real one. Once I saw it, it was all beat up oh, and crunked up. Dents all over it. Genuinely <laughs> effed up. Great. People don't, yeah, I mean, this is like real, no, it's all sorts of bungled. <laughs> That's why I help myself. Do him a favor. All right, so here we go. Mixer, done. The weekend, bust, done. Hacked, done. The hellos. How are you doing? I know we talked about how you, you know, overall and everything, but like, how are you physically today? Pretty bad. Pretty bad. Yeah. Walking in was, walking in with the walker was rough. Once in a while, my, I can walk with the walker seemingly fine, and so I trick my my head tricks me into thinking that that's how it will be, and then it's not like that. That happens to you constantly, where you'll have a good day and you'll be like, "I got it, I got it," and then this, I don't got. It's like Chunk from Goonies. I don't got it. <laughs> totally. This just feels worse. Like usually, it's like generically disconnected, and I this pot that we get some, sometimes hydrotic from uh from chris, chris is very strong like insanely strong it disconnects my muscle memory so i have to literally <sighs> tell myself how to do everything all the time oh god you and cannot I'm catch exhausted. a break you cannot That's... catch a break even the medicine even the medicine fucks with you yeah and that's it's it's great for mental work, but it's not as good to knock out pain. The trade craft does that more succinctly, generically. So this whole thing is a learning curve. All right. Well, I need to go back to trade craft and get you some flour from them anyway. They 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 know. I mean, they're 
they're happy to give it oh, to you. Oh, I know. Okay. It, maybe to, maybe I'll go tomorrow, actually. No, maybe I'll, I'll, if they're around, I'll go tomorrow. I'll, I'll, I'll reach out. Learning curve. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad that – I'm so grateful to everybody, by the way. You know, she – if you ever – you come up to GVC B- – B- B- God damn it. Come up to Newcomb's <laughs> Ranch on a Friday morning and you see uh, somebody, you know, give her like a pre-roll or a pen or a something, whatever. Like she is she is not above free pot. If you want her to test your pot, <laughs> she'll test it. She'll tell you what she thinks. She'll review yep. it. Uh, she's a hell of a good writer. So if you're into that, um, by all means do. Otherwise, officially, obviously, Tradecraft and Hydrotic is what you what you medicate with. But you're willing to experiment with anything. I like playing with everything that comes up. And the future of your organization will be – part of it will be stuff like this. So I feel like it has to be. Like this is stuff I should be able to ask people and no one knows anything. Yes, and people should be able to ask you, does yeah. this help? Does this help? How about this? What does I'm this do for you? I'm excited to be able to do that. So doing different things in the weirdest way. It hurts like a mother, but whatever. Like I'm figuring out what's wired to what. You've already been very clear on the show, and forgive me if I'm putting a word in your mouth, but it's almost like you've dedicated your, your your the rest of your body to science. You know what I mean? Like you're saying, all right, I'm fucked here. So if you can get anything out of this, let's do it. Information, yeah. education, experimentation. In the, it's what I feel like it's what I can do best at this point. No one wants to be told what to do. I I can see what people should do potentially, but I'm usually wrong. So <laughs> there's that too. But like I'm still pretty discerning, but no one wants to hear that. So this is something that is a little more welcoming. People like pot. People like pot? People do like pot. Yeah, that's yeah. funny. Not what a like, surprise. <laughs> I was never part of that community. So this Nor I. Is but now that we are, I, I see the it. benefits that I used to either poo-poo or just was unwilling to see. Same. And yeah. people are rad as shit and so thoughtful and sharing and whatever. I love it. You're surrounded by some pretty good people, too. Lemonade this Porsche man. community, like the the friends that we have, and the, I mean, they're everyone. <laughs> it is, forgive the sisterhood element, but like it is a brotherhood. This is a it's a family for oh, sure. Yeah. Everyone has your back. It's everyone has your back. I feel it, and I'm just next to you. But I and I love you, <laughs> and I love everyone. But you're different. I look for you every time I'm up there. You look I for spot me. Spot you, yeah. Oh, because I'm out and about. Yeah. With people. It's a weird it's connection rival. thing. I yeah, that's what, that's all it is. She's. <laughs> 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 I mean, she's not getting home without you. So. <laughs> I'm ironically not worried about that. Like, I'll, I'll talk no, to. Someone will give you a ride. Somebody. Someone out there. will. Like, people are dicks. Like, whatever. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. All right. Uh, well, in that case, I'm going to say that um, I'm going to remind you. That they say all that separates men and boys is the coverage for their toys. In this case, Mrs. Ryan, what are we talking about? Collector cars, I bet. Collector cars. Collector cars or collector trucks, collector motorcycles. Um, By the way, they don't even have to be collectors. But anything in the garage. How about that garage? How about the garage itself or the house it's attached to or the business that supports all of that lifestyle? All of those things are insurable. And St. Clair Insurance shops the top providers so you get the best coverage. (laughs) If I were you, I'd go to coverageforyourtoys.com, coverageforyourtoys.com. Coverageforyourtoys.com. Say hi to Jeff Sinclair. Tell him you saw it here. The best bubbles in the world are made by Bubble Tree, the American bubble company. Lest I forget, if your car needs some TLC (laughs) in 2021, bring it on home to TLG. (laughs) TLG Auto, Porsche service. At your service. (laughs) <laughs> He's like, no, no one will ever get this. This is not what we provide. <laughs> Try. Oh, gosh. This is Jay Ryan on behalf of Nicole Ryan. This Nicole right here. She's asking you through me to please like, subscribe, and comment below. This feeds the internet algorithm and eventually us as well. Mrs. Ryan says, please. <laughs> Like, subscribe, and comment. It'll be fire. And the smoke behind her denotes the fire it will be. Woo!
<laughs> thank you for doing it. Somebody obviously just did it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ah, oh. uh, here's everybody over here. Motor and Well Black says, LOL, OC Car Spotter is here. Nicole, you're amazing, says Fight on Blaster. Thank you, Mac 250 FMC joined. Bobby Holland Art is here. Welcome back, says Johan's, Johan's Pick. I'm going to say that's probably Johan's Pick versus Johan's Pick. That's right. Started following us. Thanks for the follow, Johan. Uh, OC Car Spotter, <laughs> let me see if my memory is Carol. Is that Carol? We met her at Marconi? Or is that someone else? Are you Carol? Carol? <laughs> come on down. Auto Kennel. Oh, no way. <laughs> Did Auto Kennel just sponsor our mixer? <laughs> he might have. Oh, my God. All right. So, you know what? Um, so, the thing is, we don't need a mixer anymore. We ha we're going <laughs> to... This all happened in real time. Oh, so that. shout out to Paul Kramer and the Auto Kennels. Uh, thank you, the Ed and the Jennifer uh, and and the Paul Kramer from the Auto Kennels uh, who sponsored our new mixer, which I will go ahead and I'll buy this mixer when we get off the air. I love Paul Kennel. <laughs> thank you, Auto Kennels. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Shitter was full. <laughs> That's awesome. That was very cool. And uh, Auto Kennel, by the way, is uh, they're going through a huge... He's happy to do nice stuff for us because he's going through a huge home remodel with the Jennifer Kennel, who, you oh, know, so yeah. he's living he's living in a hallway that's like every all the stuff they own is, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> he's living in um, passageways in the house while they redo the rest of the place. I, I didn't say that well, but you know what I mean? Like everything from the whole I house do. is in a certain area. So you're, you're it's like a junk store. You're all walking through little. I'm glad to give you an outlet. <laughs> <laughs> Super cool. All right. Uh, did we do everything? I did the commercials. We did it all. TLG. Auto Kennel. Shop smart. Better call Paul. <laughs> Happy Hanukkah. Kiss my ass. Kiss his ass. Kiss your ass. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Damn, that's love. Man, that's so cool. I'm so grateful. Man. All right. Uh, let's take a quick break solely so we can get our guest in here and so you can hear these beautiful short messages from Oh So Delicious Hot Sauce. The hot sauce, Mrs. Ryan. Made by bears. <laughs> made by bears. Oh, so delicious. It's the hot sauce made by bears. Garlic and serrano mixed with love and care. You can put it on your eggs, pour it on your rice. It's great on a leg. It's better on a slice. It's oh, so delicious. It's the hot sauce made by bears. Oh, so delicious hot sauce. Great on everything except oatmeal. Get your bottle today at ohsodelicious.org. One dollar from every bottle sold goes to the National Military Family Association. I'm Johnny Lieberman, and you're watching LMP. What does LMP stand for? Late Night Play Oh, yeah, that's right. I've been on there. Yeah, good show. <laughs> you should like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. There you go. What are you driving today? 63356B. Right. Hey, 111. What are you driving today? Here we go. Oh, this is fun, David. Thumbs up for sure. This just proves that you don't have to go fast to have fun. You don't have to go fast. Can you see my smile already? Okay, I'm impressed. Don't need to stick it, he's already got it. My car's gonna feel slow as balls after this, I'll tell you that. Pedal down! Yeah, baby! Hey. The thing, I can't keep shit straight, that's where I am at. Just like that. We are back! Killing the Echo. Sitting here with Marco Girassi. He has come on home to us. TLG Auto's in the house. Thank you for having me. How you doing, brother? Good. Good. Thank you for having me again. It's a pleasure to be here. It's great Glad to see you. Back. We've been wanting to have you here for like a year, but you have had a hell of a year, and I'm hoping we can talk about some of that stuff. <laughs> I'm happy to talk about all of it. Awesome. It's, it's, all right, all right. No, okay. no, there we go. Yeah, that's yeah, good yeah, enough. Yeah, good. sure. No, I can't hear anything. <laughs> you want the cans? <laughs> no. We got a new mixer. I'm pretty excited about it. Is that okay? I've been wanting to ask. Is it a Mackie? Uh, no. 
You want it to be a Mac? Mackie no, was I, Mackie no. was big back in the day when when, right. we, when you and I were using mixers. I know. It's Nowadays they're different. They're different. Um, they're different manufacturers. Behringer is like one of the bigger ones nowadays. And okay. they make little tiny ones that are okay, and they make really big ones that are actually quite good. And we had a little tiny one that was okay. Like a four-track? Yeah, it was – I think it was – it had four mic inputs. I think it was like an eight or whatever track, but the other ones were like stereo. You gotcha. know what I mean? It was – it was a podcast type setup because that's mm-hmm. what we were doing. But now that we're doing like a real show, we got a bunch of mics and other things and different stations and all that stuff. We needed something bigger. Yeah, this one looks like it's got a lot of buses. So Every, it should be good. That's exactly it. So now I needed multiple buses because yeah. we want to have, now that we've got this tick, tick, tick and the glass break <laughs> and stuff like that, we want to have those be able to be heard in the studio without me. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> good <laughs> look here i put well this is good one, but here's my favorite i i put this one in yes yes uh, it sounds like home <laughs> like it's just like i stayed home from school 100 play, percent sick just so i could watch the show oh my God, that's the childhood right mm-hmm. yep did you grow up with that too? Like, in the, I yes. mean, you just had the same exact thing. But yeah. we're we're a couple years apart, right? You're younger than me. I, think. Uh, I don't know. I was born in eighty. <laughs> You're a lot younger than me. <laughs> Sorry. Good for you. Fuck you. Seventy-seven <laughs> and seventy-nine. Really? Yeah. No, I thought we were all the same age. I mean, we're oh, all that's the same pretty age. close now. I mean, anything after you know, like thirty, you're the same age until you're ninety. And I then think you're right. Yeah. It's all just a business. <sighs> um, it's been. All right, you were one of the first guests to do our show when it was just at the, t- at the table, and you did it a couple times, I think. And yeah, then, twice. and then when we moved to the desk and chairs and all that stuff, you you've been so busy lately, both at work and with all your other stuff, that like we haven't seen you. Yeah, I've been the, the last two years. I mean, aside from the pandemic stuff, but <clears throat> so you know, twenty twenty. Uh, quick recap: We are technically. <laughs> I can make this real fast. We were technically a necess- uh, what do you call those necessary business? Um, uh, yeah, no, you're right. Um, what, what do you call those? I I can't even. I use the word all the time, and now I can't remember it. But uh, essential, essential, essential business. businesses. So we were you and the weed a, dealers. We were seen as an essential business, so we never stopped working. Um, we we adjusted the hours and the amount of days we worked in mm-hmm. order to be closer with the family and being oh. you know home with the kids, um, so my wife could work remotely. You know, and also just because you don't know what's happening, you just like keep it in flux. change things, right? And so while we may have changed our hours and worked fewer days a week, we never stopped working. Mm. And then as things kind of went back to normal, um, we ramped back up at the end of last year, um, at which point I chose to complicate my life. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're going to talk about this. I wasn't yeah, sure. I, uh, I attempted to... So we've been in the same building since about 1988, and it was about time to move for a number of reasons. Um, And I made an attempt to purchase a building and relocate. Well, you purchased a building, didn't you? Well, yeah. Okay, sorry. I made an attempt to to purchase the building and relocate uh, relocate the shop. And I mean, I really Mm. stretched. I really, like, went outside my comfort zone and stuck my neck out. Basically, when I like I when I say this, I have this vision of me putting my head on a tree stump, <laughs> <laughs> and then somebody comes yes. up like a chicken. Yes, yeah. like and and really, there's just an axe hanging over my head, waiting to fall. Like that is the the vision I have when I talk about this. So, um, bought the building um, and started to rehab the building and get the permits and mm. everything. And I quickly found out that the zoning on the property was misrepresented. Oh, in the sale. Ugh. Yeah, or y- there's a lot of things. I mean, it turned Sorry. out the zoning was different than we I was expecting and was sold. The property had a number of encumbrances, is what they call them, <laughs> <laughs> which were essentially very difficult things I had to overcome in order to make the property legal Ugh. and usable. Um, but in the end, the short story is that despite the work that we did on both the building and the property with the city of Los Angeles and building and safety, 
my business was never going to be allowed to be there. <sighs> no matter what you did. No matter what I did. I eventually, if I had an endless supply of money and oh. time, I could probably have, have shifted things and, and you know, eventually overcome Three. these zoning problems and these gotten the necessary variances and all of these things. And You have learned a lot through this process because you, the things yeah. you are saying are so – Careful. Well, I, <laughs> you're very, uh, very mature language you're using. Well, I, you know, there's, there, there's, it's not finished yet. Good. I was going to ask about that. It's not finished yet. The, the building has been sold. So at the end, we closed on, on it in December, the December 31st, 2020 at 5 p.m. It was recorded as being mine. Unbelievable. The See? last recording of last year. And, you know, everyone was like, I figured, oh, that's a turning point. Everything's going to be great. Yes. 2021 has literally been uphill both ways. Desk <laughs> on my back, 12 feet of snow, newspapers for warmth. You had feet? I, you know, just, just <laughs> totally. start walking. Totally. Right? <laughs> and so <laughs> uh, I've spent quite a bit of time it, it, making the property saleable because once I found out what I found out, I had to, uh, I had to divulge that information to potential buyers. Also, right? you're I limited. Disclose it. That's the word. I'm disclose it. But it, you're also limited. Whoever sold it to you had a much larger market because they. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say, I, but it seems like if you are playing by the rules, then you have shrunk down your market for potential sales because you are representing the zoning accurately. I'm not a legal expert. I just <laughs> know that in order for me to sell the property, knowing what I knew, I had to. Uh, disclose all of the things, but I couldn't even sell it without fixing the various uh, paperwork problems with the property and the building and so on and so forth. So I, I spent considerable time and energy and money uh, doing that in order to divest myself of this investment. Unbelievable. <laughs> you know, and so, so, and that's know. all out of pocket shit that, like, yes. Yeah. If it was going back into your business, who gives a shit? But like, I, I was supporting my current. <sighs> business you know the business was was running right you know we were working every single day um and the business was paying for itself but i also had this mortgage payment on a property that i you were was never just gonna be dead able to weight. use yeah it was just oh. dead weight so all of that like i said the neck on the on the tree stump like that's you know every day you wake up it's just there again so i i had so i sold a lot of the things that i had collected over the years and you know, to just keep things flowing and floating and you make it work, right? It's right. that or it's going to bankruptcy and lose the building. And like, then you ruin your credit and you get all these other problems. And then you don't even have a life that you're fighting you for anymore. You got to start yeah, over. You got to start over. And, and and I'm not, I'm a fighter, you know? So, you know, you learn, you, you, you move forward, you learn. I mean, I could get mad, I could get angry and frustrated and poor me. It's just like, what the hell? Just Just keep moving forward. You know, some days we're two steps forward. Some days we're one step back. <sighs> but it, some but, days we're it's network. I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. Yeah, I. You know, I spent a lot of time, a lot of energy, and money that I didn't have uh, to work through it. And I'm I'm more educated. It was a very expensive education. <sighs> oh, um, nice. You know, but I learned it was a crash course in real estate. That you know, I'm a Porsche mechanic. I know what I know. I tried something new and it didn't work out, but I will live to fight another day. And eventually we will get another property and a building and we will eventually move. I mean, that is just, it's the plan, right? You're just, learning LA real estate, which is way worse than regular real estate. Yeah. There's I, so much more, more to it. There's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. The, the, the short story though is, is that it's gone. Oh, it's they, done. You're, you're done I with done, yeah, oh, the, the building. The building is sold. Great. To, to the, to the new buyer. Um, I don't know what they, he, she, it, that entity is going to do with it. I don't know. I don't care. Um, I just know that I don't have to pay that money every month. Huge. <laughs> so Ugh. I can now focus again on my current situation, put all that energy and time that I was putting into that. I can now focus on my business um, and my family. Yeah. You know, and, and it was – People kept saying, oh, you're under a lot of stress. I'm like, I guess. I don't know. Like, you just learn to live with it. You had a lot of big <laughs> things in only a couple short years. Yeah. Like, we know what that's like. You had some – I mean, I don't know how much you want to talk about your wife's health, but your wife went through some health stuff that, like, yeah. is enough to knock anybody out. 
Yeah, she did. She had uh, breast cancer. You know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Di- she, happy birthday. Yeah. Uh, yeah happy she birthday. got the notice like not too long after her birthday uh, in 2019. Good news. Yeah. Congratulations. You have cancer. Uh, <laughs> but you know, like the way it's so it's like you can take that kind of news. I remember when I was in the office when my dad got the phone call from his doctor that he had cancer. Really? You were there? Uh, I was there when he took the phone call, you know, and I remember how I felt hearing it from the phone call. You could like, see and hear your dad. I could just, I heard his responses and I knew what was being said. It was very different with him than it was with, with my wife, Amy. Okay. Um, the thing about Amy is that it's a cancer diagnosis, but it's like the best scenario that you could have because it was early. They caught it very early um, because she had done her job, which is she had gotten uh, genetic screening and they found out she had the BRCA2 gene. So oh. then she upped her mammograms. She like ramped up how often she was getting mammograms and tested and all that stuff. And so she was smart enough to be on top of that shit. In she the first was place. proactive. My wife was very proactive. So they caught it very early, Huge. and that is great. But that was at 2019 in December. So that means 2020 was her dealing was dealing with her cancer. Right. And then after that happened, we did the building, and then after. Towards the end of that, she had uh, her her surgery. The, she had a double mastectomy because and, and it was there was all these breaks in the timeline because of COVID, and they weren't doing elective surgery. Yep. Technically, her mastectomy was was deemed an elective surgery, even though it wasn't. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But so like you know, it was scheduled, then it got bumped, and then it got rescheduled. Anyway, that's all done, and then there was you know. 12 to 20 week recovery on that one and you know all during co- let alone covid the rest of us were just dealing with covid well that that the that part of it was 21 the oh. cancer and the treatment and that stuff was 20 so like the last two years have been busy <sighs> i'd say and then you know working and thank god we have a, her side of the family she's humongous family oh, and that's they good. are supportive very supportive and you know they're, they can be so supportive because there's so many of them. <laughs> Safety and in numbers, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. And they're just like, it takes a village. It took the whole village to get us through this. And we are eternally grateful to everybody who, who stepped up and was like understanding of like, hey, man, I need the kids picked up or I got to make lunches or, you know, can you just come over and watch them for 30 minutes while I take a shower? Like, But you had that support it, we system. We had that support system and we still do and it's great. And <sighs> You know, it's amazing. We just rotate it to whoever needs us, kind of thing. I'm one of those people who grew up with, I don't know, kind of a nutso family, and then I picked all my friends really carefully, mm. and they were like my family. You know what I mean? Like my friend family. You know, Ooh. especially when you move across country and all the things. Um, as you get older, I, I, I can't believe how wrong I was with my younger thinking and how important family is and everything. At least how important I find it these days being on the other side of things um as something that never would i wouldn't have cared about when i was younger and with age eternal gratitude for 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 family just family just straight up family i'm saying that this is more for me than anything else uh, <laughs> I, I was not the family guy <laughs> he's the family <laughs> i just wasn't i didn't come from that i was an only child and we uh, divorced it was a broken you know what i mean oh I do know what you. We mean, didn't yes. have the support system. Your family. That, I was whatever. an only child with you know a very difficult childhood. Yeah. So I get you do family thing. My parents never got divorced, but it wasn't. I mean, there were times when <laughs> do I you wonder wish they why. did. Yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't wish they did, but like, I, I there were times when I was wondering why they didn't. You know. Yeah. Um, by the way, I just checked my phone because we had that conversation about my wife and making sure she wasn't texting me. Yeah. But I'm in the clear. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. 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 <laughs> it wasn't her. Good. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, so um, I understand what you're saying. And family was not important to me when I was younger. As I got older, it became much more important. Yeah, is that um, just, it's just age or you go through, is it experience? Like we go through enough life that we realize, oh, we don't have it all ourselves like we think we do. Like we can't just do it all. I think it may be a little bit of both, mm. you know, like wisdom, <laughs> you know, it's hard earned. <laughs> oh, wise you know? statement. It's what a wise statement. Like you just there's some things you'll never you can have someone tell you all the answers 
You know what I'm saying? We say this all the time. But until you walk through it yourself, and you, then, then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I remember when that guy told me that. He was right. <laughs> 20 I years ago, listened. I should have taken that lesson. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I tell my son, I go, listen, I'm trying to make your life easier. And I hear my, my father saying the same thing to me or my mother saying the same thing to me. And I can hear him going, uh-uh. <laughs> I'm going to learn it my way. And, and that's fine. You know, I just, I warned you, you know. Or, you were the same way? Of course I was. I'm yeah. not an idiot. I mean, I am an idiot. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I mean, it's just, it's hard to step back and look at myself from that way. But, oh, you know, your children are definitely a mirror of you. That's another thing. Maybe it's age, being honest about your own shit. You know, when I was, you know, when you're, when you're younger, like everything's an excuse. Nothing, nothing's ever your fault. You know what I mean? Like, ah, oh, so-and-so did whatever. And that's what caused the kerfuffle and whatever the fuck. And as an adult, it's like I take great pride in just taking responsibility for shit. Because the moment I do, I can make it go away. And you can <laughs> Whatever this it. thing is, uh, guess what? You know what? It was my bad, and I'm going to make it totally erase. Yep. That's called integrity. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Integrity is doing the right like thing even when it doesn't serve you. That's hard to do, but that's sort of like our mission statement these days. Yeah. It's how, you, it's how I run my life. Integrity. Got to. It's the only thing you got in this world, man. Like, the money comes and goes. The stuff comes and goes. You have your word. You have your actions. You know? Say what you mean. Mean what you say. Do what you say you're going to do. Be impeccable with your word. Yeah. Yeah, look. I mean, I'll tell someone I'll do something. It may take me a little longer sometimes, but I'll get it done. You know? I make a mistake. Hey, I made a mistake. I'm human. You know? Let's fix it. Can we fix it? Yeah. You know, whatever it may be. It's just What are you upset about? Let's get past it. Yeah, like, right. Okay. Just, so what did I say? What have that. I done? What 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 is the issue here? Let's solve it. You know? Yeah. And I mean that to run my business that way. I try to run my life that way. You know, it's hard. It's not easy having integrity. Well, no, especially in a customer service business, I would imagine for you, because like if you're when someone's paying, I'm guessing that they feel entitled to a certain amount of my way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I guess. I Don't let me put words in your mouth. I'm, well, I'm curious. Well, no, I mean, I understand that, what you're saying. I mean, but the other side of it is, like, there, in my particular business, I provide a service, but part of the service isn't necessarily getting the work completed. It's it's the the way in which it's done, the the goal of the thing. Um, it's not It's not always a cut and dried repair. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're not just paying for, I guess, it's hard to explain. You're buying the knowledge and the experience along with the actual end result. It's hard to, I guess, quantify. No, it's not. I I do. I think I, I, in terms of a special, like there's doctors, there are GPs, and then there are specialists. And I feel like you're like a GP and a specialist. And if you want the specialist, expertise then you're going to pay for the specialist expertise i mean like there's it's a it's a it's a it's it 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 funnels down to a finer am i making any sense you look at me like i'm not i'm not (laughs) maybe i'm I'm wrong maybe i'm wrong i could be wrong Uh, well i just here here's a good example i have a very good friend and client who wants things done a certain way right we've done a couple of cars together i know Um, this guy no you don't oh okay no you don't um he's he's very low-key he's like totally off the radar I've known the guy 20-something years almost, Um, and he has this particular car that he asked me to do something, and I say no. And he says, but it's my car. Do it that way. I said, no, I'm not going to do it. If you don't want – if you want it that way, I won't do it that way. You get to take it to somebody else. He goes, well, I want you to do it. I said, then I'm not doing it that way. We're going to do it this way. Right. Because of my expertise and my experience. Yes, and I'm like, I'm not going to let you mess this thing up, right? what I believe it to be messing it up, right? I'm like, you. the thing is too good. Making these choices will net you a result you will be unhappy with. Trust me. And at the end of the day, it's coming back to me anyway. It took, <laughs> it. I mean, over the course of, we'll call it a few years, of back and forth and push and pull, the car evolved into what it is now. And randomly, he'll send me a text message. I drove my car for the last week. Best car I ever had. I'm so thrilled. Essentially, and- you were right at the end of the day. Yes and no. I mean, there was a lot of push and pull and give and take, but I didn't let him turn his streetcar into a race car. I didn't let him cut it up and put flares on it. I didn't let it, I, I made him kind of like live within the box. I yeah, love the box. Sure. Right? You, you, you come up with a, I like, I loved 
the parameters, right? And I yes. love I love some of the best to, work comes with fitting inside parameters. You so you have I like to have a, an idea and just fit it within this thing, and and don't push the sides out once you've built the box. Just do the best you can in the thing, right? And we fought over it. I mean, he, there were times when he says, it's my money and I'm paying you. And I said, then I don't want your money. Take it away. And he's like, but you're doing it. And, and I was like, well, then we're going to do it my way. And we argued and argued. And then this next car we're working on, he he wants things. And I'm not saying no. I'm saying okay. And he's Oh, he's interesting. Like, yeah, I'm letting him have his way. Is and that a – why? What's your – Because he, he let me build him the car I knew he wanted – the first time around and I know what he wants the second time around so so far I'm allowing him to make the choices because I agree with them and I'm they're not too far off to. the reservation and they're not I'm not comfortable with all of them but like okay it's okay. your car yeah. you know I'm not gonna put air conditioning in it but like it's it's your car you want to put a 3.8 RSR motor in a 72 let's do it Oof, you know Jesus I mean that's Christ. a Tear the car apart, yeah. fine, you know? I guess like, we're going to, yeah. You know, it is what it is. But, like, Twist that's the because up. he already has the car he wanted when we started. Now so now we're playing and expanding. It's a different game. The, there are no real parameters. The parameter on this one is the look. Right? Interesting, but he it, never would have been happy with the other one. Maybe, He would have been very unhappy there with the other one. And, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm not the smartest guy in the game. I just... My experience allows me to get people from point A to point B, you know? And, yeah. And from there, like, I've made the mistakes so you don't have to. <laughs> God, there's so much truth in that. You know? I mean, like, it's like, it's that's... parental stuff. That is priceless. There isn't a value on that. Yeah. <laughs> I've made the mistakes so you don't have to. Yeah. I'm about to make a whole lot of mistakes on my own stuff, you know? Are you doing your car now? Uh, well, I don't have a choice. Uh, Someone backed into it. Let's talk about that. So the yeah. white 75? The 75 Carrera, yeah. Yeah, what happened? Car, well, well you, you brought, it was in storage. So I, I put the car away. The cars needed a motor. So like back up, I built the motor a few years ago now. I mean, it's like eight years ago I built this motor, nine years ago. And um, I put it in the car. I feel like it's at least that, right? Uh, well, it was before my dad passed away. So that was, that was five been years? five years. Yeah. And so it was probably a couple years before that. that Shit, I, okay. The, okay. So I built this, this car um, probably about eight years ago. And I put the motor in, and it was fucking fast. And it was a great motor. It was a 3.2 short-stroke turbo. You know, no intercooler, narrow, narrowish body, Carrera body. Like, real low-key car, except yeah. for the noise. Uh, I took it to the track and just broke it. <laughs> I, just, I broke the motor. Um, just pushing too hard? Yeah. It was, uh, it was at Button Willow. Air temp was 110 degrees, and I just kept. Just kept beating going. it and beating it. And Let's beating see what it, it can take. It. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. I knew the bottom end would hold together, but I, I didn't expect to crack the cylinder. Yeah. So I, I mean, I blew the motor up. It was pretty good. Um, so I drove it. I, I, uh, I towed it home and um, took it apart, and we, we only fixed the broken hole. I remember that. Yeah, and in doing that, we realized that the rest of the motor was probably hurt too. But I needed to get the car back up and running. Yep. And it's, we'll get to it. Yeah, I'll eventually do it. But it ran. I mean, and it still runs. And it still runs well. I mean, it makes, you know, 310 horse to the wheel. It's That's like not bad for a five and a half cylinder, you know. Um, <laughs> but like I've been collecting Narrow parts. body car too. Yeah, it's Carrera, Carrera body. It's still, yeah. You know, no turbo anything yeah. uh, body work wise. Uh, so anyway, um, I put the car in storage because I was dealing with this building and I had moved a lot of my inventory to stage it for the move to the new building. Yep. And so I had run out of storage. And so I didn't have any place to put my own stuff. And so I, I sent my car off to storage. And um, I was like, well, I'm taking some time off this month and maybe I'll do my motor. So I brought the car back and I it started it starts right up. It'd been in storage for nine months. It started right up. No did it battery or anything? Ba really? Battery was 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 dead. I, I threw it on a charger for overnight, like on a but trickle fuel, charger. fuel, everything else just fired right up. Awesome. Yeah, one crank. Boom. I'm like, oh shit, this motor's really good. You know, like I, I I know I need to rebuild it, but like I don't really want to. You take built it, it apart. well the first time too. I really don't want to take it apart. But I've been collecting pieces for it. So I figured, ah, one last hurrah. I'll take it out for a Saturday. Son of a bitch. And I'll putter around and I'll enjoy it. And so I did. I took it to um, Beverly Glen on Saturday morning. <sighs> And after that, I went to my shop to go do some some work on 
some project stuff. And I had the car parked in front of my building, and uh, the guy across the driveway backed into it and broke the left rear tail light and fender. It looked like, and, yeah, some body work. It looked like yeah, the, it, the... <laughs> I mean, the car's rough. Let's not be... Let's not be like lying to ourselves. The car hadn't been painted since '98 or something. Like that was the last time it got some paint put on it. I mean, it needed, but you can't match that kind of beat down patina. So like I love now that I got to paint love the whole car. car. But now I got to take the whole car apart and I got to paint the whole car in order to fix that one thing. Really? Yes, because it. I mean, look, it needs a driver's door, like. The, the door check is ripped out of it. it needs oh, a door. I see. So I got to replace the door. So if you're anyway. doing that stuff anyway, then you may so as well paint So you got to paint the quarter panel and you got to paint the door. And then the left front fender's got a dent in it. You got to fix that. You got to paint the fender. Well, then the hood's got chips. You gotta if you're the, doing that much, you it's know, the whole car. You're all the way back. You've painted three quarters of the car. Paint the whole damn thing. That's so, what we did. You know, you got to push the windows out, take the doors apart, take everything fucking apart. It's oh, yeah. It's like never ending. All of a sudden, it's a $15,000 job. More? Really? It's bad. Yeah, it's real bad. Good Lord. It's got rust. I mean, like, it hasn't been... I mean, the car was built in 94. It was a daily driver yeah, for 20 true. years. That's true. I forget about that. You know? Did you build that and the 914 at the same time? My dad built the nine built the 911, and then uh, about a year later, I built the 914, and I needed paint for the 914, and he had lift, leftover paint from the 911. That's what it so was. So I painted it with the same color. Because they they look like, the, it looks like a racing team. Like they match yeah, with yeah, the wheels and everything. Yeah, they were both Grand Prix white. Yeah. You know? But that's how the 914 got painted white. <laughs> it just had extra. I just, there's some extra paint left over. and Nothing wrong with that. And it, was like eight, it was like nine, ten months later, you know, so. Do you, where's your dad's car? Uh, you which still one? have that? The blue one. The blue one is around. It's it's around. it's around. Yeah. <laughs> no, none of my business. I'm just curious. No, no, it's around. Because you every once in a while you would drive it up to Newcombs on Friday. Yeah, I hadn't car, seen it in a long, long time. That car is around, but it's off the road for a while. Cool. So, and my mom, she still has the other car. She's got the beige car. Yeah. And that's that's her car. But with she the, with the liners and all the yeah yeah, yeah I love that car. Buildings and stuff. I yeah. like I when she she brought it in whatever during Yellow Car 2.0 she brought it in for something, and I ended up going over it for the first time and and I thought it was so cool. Yeah, it's a great car, man. It's got you know it's Carrera with, with but it's got all the bright work body. and it's got all the you early know it body. just looks like it looks like the real estate lady's car. <laughs> my dad and my, my dad built a touring car that he could go touring with my mom. So it's got air, electric windows, you know, like all the nice stuff. Totally comfortable. So oh, it's great. Easy car to drive. Late yeah. model gearbox, so it's got long gears and stuff. Like, oh, beautiful. Yeah, it's an 84 Carrera underneath. With the G50 box? No, 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 915. Oh, okay. Yeah, 915, 3.2 Carrera motor, Carrera suspension, front and back, Carrera brakes. You know. Oh, jeez. Yeah. But, the car but moves, not, too. Oh, it, it goes. Hmm. Yeah, I wrap the Speedo around. <laughs> <laughs> but, Holy uh, crap, Lois! <laughs> you know, but but what's great is um, you know when my mom's having a lot of like foot surgery and knee surgery and stuff right now. She okay? Yeah, she's getting older. You know, just like tune tune it up. You know. Yeah. Um. So when all that she's still stuff working, is, she's still real estate. Oh, yeah. She's real estate and hardcore. <laughs> Good for her. She's busier now than she's been in like ever. You know, I love your mom. <clears throat> I know. <laughs> she's a special lady. Yeah. I she's love her. She's intense, man. She's wow. intense. She's like really good at her job. Yeah. But she can take it as well as she gives it. And that to me is like, all right, if you're going to take it as well as you give it, then like I can say nothing about that. Right. Oh, she gives it out plenty. Right. But if you fight back, she'll take it too. And like, yeah. then it's kind of like, all right, well, that's a respect thing. All right. It's well, just I a, think that's she's how, like a it's got New Yorker in her or that's something. That's her litmus test, right? Like if she pushes and you push back, she's like, all right, this one's okay. Oh, no shit. Yeah. I don't think she realizes really that's what she does, that but that's how she does it. She's very much. You've got, got her number. Her. Well, I mean, forty-one years later, it took me a while, but I figured it out. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting there too with mine. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> no, it's a learning curve. It's, it's a learning curve. I talked to mine today. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I was. I, I needed a breather after. Everything was fine, but you know, it's just some stuff doesn't get easier. No. No, it doesn't. But I feel like I feel like I change a lot and I grow a lot and I feel like she's still the same person. <laughs> Hey, at least you know what you're gonna get. I'm I, look. I love my mom. She's great. She's. I mean, she's Same. a tough, tough lady. Um, I you guess know, our relate her and I. Our relationship. What's great is that it's it's constantly growing and changing. You yeah. know, as I get older and she gets older, we see each other differently. You That's know? what you want. Always evolving. Yeah. You want that. Yeah. 
Well, good for both of you. Mm-hmm. And I guess, you know, you're a dad now, too. So, like, that there probably has to be a little bit of perspective. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is what my parents were doing. Well, <laughs> you know, it's the, I mean, that's what they say about parents, right? Like, you never understand how much your parents love you until you have a kid of your own kind of thing. Like, you could you can say it and say it and say it and say I love you I love you I love you until you, but until there's that thing that depends on you to live like With unconditional you just don't love get and all it. of it yeah 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 I yeah it's crazy is it people talk about like a like they get a download like I've had a few friends who you know they were having kids and they wanted to have kids but they inside internally you know I don't know if I'm ready you know all that stuff and then the moment you know ready. they have the kid right you're okay. never ready and then the moment they have the kid you know there's like I don't know. But like a universal life download where like they get some programming they didn't have previously and then all of a sudden, oh, now I'm doing this shit with the kid. Is there any truth to that? Like well, is that anything? I can tell you from my own personal experience that the day that my child was born, my, my son, he was the first. Not because he's better or whatever, but just the <laughs> first, day that, first kid. <laughs> the day that my, my first child was born, I, I had been saying, you know, nothing's going to change. I'm going to be the same person. <laughs> You know, my mother-in-law still cracks me about that shit. She's just like, you said that? And I'm like, I would never say that. She goes, you said it, and you were wrong, and we told you you were wrong, and now you see that you were wrong. I'm like, yeah, my life is totally different. Like, wow. you know, um, the things that matter just don't matter anymore. Yeah. The things that were important are just not important anymore. Yeah. You know, um, priorities, man. You I know, do. they shift. Like, I would have probably made – I would have been like, oh, I got to fix my car. No problem. I'll take the motor out and I'll do this. And Just I'll do go do it. And like in six months, it would probably be fixed. Now it's going to be two years. You know, like <laughs> – right. I just don't have time. You know, there's other things that are more important. Um, you know, like it's just yeah. life. It's just life. Um, Mrs. I'm looking at Mrs. Ryan's shirt there in the monitor. And um, the, the, the last time I had some fun with you outside at well, the studio or like your shop was at Matt Farah's 40th birthday party. It was party. a lot of fun, yeah. I had a great time. I mean, I had a great time that night, but I really had a great time hanging out with you and Amy at that table. We had that little booth table where everybody just kept, like, one by one, they kept, like, making the round that, like, Adam Ferrara comes and sits down, and somebody else <laughs> comes over, and then, you know, Magnus comes by. Like, it just, it, it, it was funny because it felt like a, a little bit, like, rat packy. Like, it, you know what I mean? Like, it was like we're in the booth table. Oh, yeah. Um, how was that for you guys? I had a great time. I mean, we don't go out. Like, we just don't. Yeah. I mean, we didn't go out before COVID when we had kids. And now that, you know, we have – now that, like, the COVID thing, that you just don't go out, you know. Yeah. Um, and do functions. You do one-on-one stuff, but you just don't do the function thing. So it was really – A, it was really nice to just, like, be at a party to celebrate someone's birthday. Like Yeah, out I, and about with people and music. Yeah, exactly. Like, to do a social thing was nice and different, and I forgot what that was like. Yeah. Um, well, I just, I mean, my wife usually can't go to the things with those, with that group of friends, right? Because she works weekends. Yeah. And so like, she doesn't attend the car stuff with me. Um, so she doesn't really get a chance to meet and really get to know the, the friend group, right? She it's doesn't like, realize how, maybe how big your circle is at some points i guess when I mean, adam ferrara came over and sat down that was the funniest moment of the entire night and i'm hoping you'll tell at least a little bit of that I would story you tell it because i was busy getting yelled at for that one well i don't know exactly what happened because i wasn't privy to all the backstory on your side but but what did happen in the room was you know we're sitting at that booth table and like i said people one by one would kind of once they saw us over there they would come over and say hello and it wasn't intentional. It was only so I could tell you. Remember, there was like some private information I wanted to tell you about some goings on. And that was the only reason we even right. c- cornered in there. Well, we were trying to catch up. We hadn't caught up in a while. It had been yes. a week, you know. Yes. So. so so then Adam Ferrara comes over and says, hey, what's going on, pal? You know, to me. <laughs> and and then he sees you. And he's like, hey, how's it going? And he says hello to Marco, who clearly now that it's, it's, it's very clear that you two have known each other before this moment. You were not just introduced. Now, Amy's sitting next to him, his wife who clearly doesn't know that he knows Adam Ferrara, and I find out later is like a really big Adam Ferrara fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she really likes – she le- she really loved his specifically the, the character of Needles. On Rescue Me. On Rescue Me. Like that was where like the Adam Ferrara love came from. Right? And I've never even seen that show, but you know my I'm a son of a firefighter, so like I'm totally into it. Okay, I didn't know that you were the son of a firefighter. Oh, yeah. That's rad. That's what – 
that's what that's all about. Yeah. I thought that was from Adam to you as a gift. From, no, if you look was... at the black and white photo below it, my grandmother's in that photo at oh, the fire wow. department. My, my dad and my uncle and my grandmother, they were all, it was, you know, <laughs> Connecticut in the of 40s. It was like war times. And, uh, and they all were part of the fire department there in the, in the town huh. of Stanford, Connecticut. Well, interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's, that's a cool little soundbite. Because it was a volunteer uh, yeah. thing. He was small a, community volunteer firefighter. He was a, yeah. he was a, a photographer by trade. But, um, but yeah, I don't know. It's kind of neat. So anyway, so Rescue Me, is a, it's always been on my radar. I just never got to it. Like right. when it was out, it was the 90s or 2000s, and there were like so many other things 90s, on television. 2000s, yeah. And I just wasn't watching it at the time, and I missed it. Dennis Leary is hilarious. He's such a good but actor. Like, it's not even about being funny. It's a very dr- – I mean, it's funny, but it's also a very good drama. Everybody says that. And it that. touched on a lot of things, you know. Um, you would recommend it? Oh, highly. Yeah. We'll, we'll highly watch. recommend it. And I watched it because my wife told me to watch it, and I fell in, like just all the way in. But You watched the whole thing? Uh, I think – so yeah, she she. I need to go back and revisit. She's it. She's like, we watched. I've watched it twice all the way through, and I'm working on the third. She <laughs> yeah, <said. laughs> yeah. So anyway, you know, she, that spe- his specific character, <clears throat> Needles. She, I, I mean, she loves the character, <clears throat> and you know, by he's default, like the chief or something, right? Isn't he like the desk guy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's the chief. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, Chief Needles, Captain, Captain, Captain Needles, Captain. I think it's Captain. Oh, I Captain. Yeah, sure. Captain. I think it's Captain. Uh, anyway, long story short, is you know, <laughs> she found out that I kind of peripherally knew Adam. I mean, I don't really know where he and I ever met, but like we had this familiarity. Oh, like you're shit. Our me. paths had crossed, but we weren't like buddies. But he it certainly seemed like it. We just kind of knew one another in passing. But like, the way at the other at the party the other night it was like, hey buddy, how you doing? Like I'm just seen a very time. nice guy and I try to be a nice person. Try. It's hilarious. It doesn't always work. But But he knew who you were. It wasn't he wasn't just being like uh, oh you're a friend of Jay's, you're okay. Like he knew you were Marco <laughs> from TLG. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, anyway, I just I when I what happened laid to it Amy? out Cause, there. Cause, well, cause something Amy, happened. She all I know is like she, she was elbowing you in the ribs, yeah. like, severely, like, oh, don't you fucking I was going to mention that she was a fan, and she's just like, don't you dare do it, don't you. And oh. I'm like, oh, watch this, you know. Oh, and, and then I, just, I did it. Oh, we both did it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we, we, made, we made her, you know, enjoy the moment. And, she, I mean, granted, she had a great time, and she's glad we did what we did. And, Once I found out she know. was a fan, I was like, so here's the thing. She's a big fan of Rescue Me and you specifically. So this is Amy. It's his wife. The whole thing. I was like, so what is it that specifically you liked about the show? Like we tried to do the whole thing to try to. It was a good bit. It was a good. Tried bit. to give her the moment. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, it was. It was a lot of fun. And you know, just like I said, to see everybody and just catch up. Oh, so great! You know, like just to catch up with Zach and and I mean Hannah. Of course, she was hilarious that night. That's um, my favorite part was was Hannah time, by <laughs> by far. She was just the best, and she put it all together. And somehow she put it all together, and was still having a good time, and like not getting stressed out about shit. And I was just so impressed with her. Well, it's what Matt said. You know, like everybody in that room, he likes. They like yeah. everybody in that room. Like it was a very comfortable room. Everybody was a friend. There was, it wasn't like you were at an event and there were random people. It was That's like what he there said. was a specific relationship with every single person in that room, and that makes a room easy. That didn't click with me until he said it during the toast. Yeah. Because it, 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 he was like, I, I like 100% of the people in this room. And he's like, you don't get that at an event. Never. 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 So you're right about that. It does yeah, make, even it, does make wedding, it a safer, you don't get a safe that place. Sometimes. You know, like at, at a wedding, you, <laughs> Sometimes. you know, well, I mean, you know, <laughs> ever. <laughs> well, Amy and I, what's great about Amy and I is, is our wedding. Uh, you know, we, we did not have anyone there that we did not know personally or have a specific relationship with. Yeah. You know, like there were no randos. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that happens at weddings. Like I get, I've been invited to weddings. Like, why am I even here? <laughs> yeah. Like I'm here I don't go because to those I'm ones. a peripheral f- relation to this. If I feel that I don't belong there, we just don't go. Nope. Right. Like, I don't eh, have that's a kind of a weird. Sometimes I don't have a choice, you know. Oh, I see. Right. <laughs> but like, not only are you married, but your wife's a rabbi, too. So, like, Correct. there's a lot of respons- social responsibilities, probably. Yeah. And look, I mean, when she, like, we have gone places. We, like, uh, we went to Reno one time. Um, I had a great time there. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> great time in Reno. I think it was, it was, it was like, or Lake Tahoe. It was like, those are different Reno places. Tahoe. It was Reno Tahoe. I don't remember. Tahoe's lovely. You know, both are great. I okay. Mean, like, I think it was Tahoe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they were thinking Reno. But anyway, we went to Tahoe, uh, and she was doing a wedding there. 
And oh. I was her date to the wedding. So oh. she knew the bride and groom. I knew nobody but my wife, who I couldn't be with because she was doing she the wedding. the whole time. So like, hey, this is weird. <laughs> oh. Like, yeah. hey, this is weird. All hey, right, this is weird. cool. So, but, and I just like stand back and like drink. Find and the bar, yeah. And food. Yep, yep. And just like fade into the background, you know? <laughs> um, like you can't do at a car event because everyone comes and talks to you? I try to fade into the yeah, background. But, but you can at a car event because everyone comes and talks to you? It's not, actually, I'm not that popular. I'm really not that popular. When I see you at Beverly Glen, everyone comes and talks to you. They always, everyone seems to, like, you and Auto Kennel, for obviously your expertise, different expertise, but, like, everyone goes, oh, what do you think this is worth? Oh, what, blah, 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 what's the market on these? And everyone's, you like, oh, my thing won't go, my, uh, my thing won't go up and down or whatever support. the fuck. <laughs> yeah, tech support. <laughs> tech support. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, I, I try to participate. I try to have fun. Um, I know that, like, Lufka Kult, for example, like I was able to kind of fade into the background there a little bit, which was nice because it was such a big event. Yeah, I try not to like you know, I, you know I just try to enjoy myself. But like you. people want to talk, I'll talk. I get, I'm not like a, I'm not bigger than anything or like better than anybody. I, I just you're no you're I just awesome. try to be chill, you know. Yeah, no you you are chill. You're you're great. I can be a raging prick, but I can also <laughs> be pretty. You can cool. al- you can also be misunderstood, <laughs> like we all can. Um, I want to. Be, be, <laughs> I want to think about wrapping it up, but it's not like it's not like a tight wrap up. But I want to find out how people can take their cars to TLG in the new year. I know that. Oh. I know that. <laughs> I know. I know how busy you've been. I know we we explained what you've been going through for the last couple of years and yeah. and why things have been tight and whatever. But I do know that a tremendous amount of people are constantly asking me, "Hey, I need to blood. Where should I go? Whatever." And I have the, I have the one answer lined up. And then I'll ask geographically, you know, oh, blah, 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 if it's someplace else, maybe. But I know that it's been hard to get in to see you because you're so busy. Yeah. Um, so our, our current backlog, um, we are, we've been closed for the month of December. Like, I gave my guys the month off. Um, two years, no vacation. And just constant you were work. Cranking hard, we, yeah. We've been working really hard. They're, my guys are fantastic. I could not do this job without – Steven Armando. Like Amen. I really, I really couldn't do it. Amen. And, um, I've been doing it this month without them. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> now you know what it's I'm like. I'm like a third as productive, you know, like I, I do, I do, I realize I do a lot of paperwork and like business running. Um, so I'm, I'm attempting to, our current lead time is typically two to four weeks. We are booked because of this month off. We are booked through March. Mm, okay. Um, there are holes in the schedule, so if we can fit people in, we will. Right. I'm trying to leave a little bit more air in the schedule this coming year, so we can focus a little better. Right. You know. Um, I, I, for the longest time, we would always try to help. We always want to be of service. I've seen what that does to us physically and to the morale of the place when we get bogged down. Where's your so down? I won't allow that to happen anymore. There were a small shop. There's only three of us. Um, you know, It comes down to, uh, we talk about this even with ourselves, but the airplane thing with the oxygen mask, like you have to put your oxygen mask on first. The moment, yeah. <laughs> you, the instinct, oh, put it on the baby, put it on the wife, put it on the, the guy next to me. You got to take care of yourself first. If you don't take care of yourselves yeah. and your business, you're not good for anybody. Right. And that's not a place to be. So I think you're doing everything exactly how you should be doing. Well, it. I not mean, that also, you asked, but good also, for you. thank you. I appreciate that. I try to remember that I do this because I like it. And I want to. <laughs> that's easy to forget. <laughs> well, it, it, that's the thing. It has become very easy to forget that, like, it has. But I, I remember. When I was very young, someone says, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said, I want to be a Porsche mechanic or a race car driver. Well, Ooh, one shit. of those worked out. Shit, yeah. You know, because um, I suck at race car driving. Uh, I'm decent, <laughs> but, like, I'm not fast enough to be to be a formidable individual on a racetrack. I, I'm, I'm, like, moderately okay. Uh, but, but anyway, um, long story short is I've always wanted to be a Porsche mechanic because I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Over the last couple of years, the enjoyment kind of went away, uh, and it became a job, and I don't want that. I want to do it because I love it. And so I'm trying to get back to that place amen. where we love what we do because um, that refle- it reflects in everything we do. 
Uh, the passion comes through. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah. And and I I mean, we've always done good work, but I just want to make sure we love it. Yeah. So that's, you know, four to six weeks lead time. You know, right now, like I said, we're booked through sort of March-ish. So how do people like get email. on the schedule? Send you an email, email starting the beginning of the year? Yeah. I'm not taking anybody. Any, if you're not on the calendar now, don't even bother emailing me until January because right. I'm not answering the telephone. I am not. T- I'm not answering emails. Like so it's like getting tickets for Saturday Night Live. You send in a postcard in the month of August. <laughs> and I mean, I just, from I, this is vacation. You know, like totally. I'm, whatever work. That's the I'm only doing, re- we've been trying to get you in here for months and months and months, and we had to wait till you were on vacation to do it. Yeah, I mean, I worked today. You know, <laughs> I I did, but like the doors were shut, and I was chipping away at things that I projects that yeah. I have been wanting to get to work on. You know, are they mine? Are they other people's? It doesn't matter. It it's what I want to do. It's right. what makes me happy right now. So, oh, That's you know. really good. It's then, really good. If yeah. it may sound selfish, I, it's not. It's really, really good that you're doing I, that. I mean, I, I know that my 66 is still waiting in the wings. I know that the motor for my white car is still in pieces, you know, and you know. like there's a lot. I have my race car to put back together. Like I'm still waiting on a fuel cell. They said oh. 10 days and now they're telling me January. Oh, great. Just like, you know. How am I going to finish my car without a fuel cell? <laughs> but anyway, you know, like trying to trying to do for us a little, you know, I, I serviced my Volkswagen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Good job. Now my daily driver's up to snuff, you know. <laughs> like it had been months. Really? Yeah. It was way behind. 70,000 mile service, man. It's a big one. You know. Not in the Beetle. No, no, no. My, oh, my I facade. thought you meant your old Beetle. I was no. like, wait a second. That's Anybody a- want to buy a Beetle? It's for sale. Is it really? It will be. What year? Uh, 1970. 70. Yeah, it's a 1970 standard Beetle. I am the second owner, Whoa. second registered owner. I have the original bill of sale for the car. Um, or this actually not bill of sale, the re- sales receipt. Oh, right. I have I have a stack of paperwork. Um, car oh, like the original clothes. purchase order. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. The purchase receipt from when it was purchased at the dealership. Super cool. It's like 1600 bucks or something like that. It was bought in, in L.A.? I think it was bought in Orange County or – But still local to the – It was – yeah. I mean the the old man who owned it lived in Orange County, and so that's where it spent most of its life. Mm. Um, I put an all-new interior in it. We adjusted the valves, changed the oil. Um, I put some wheels on it because I had them. Yeah. Uh, tires. You know, fixed some rust in the floor. Um, still – you know, it's not pretty, but it's fixed. I just want to get rid of it. I hear you. I don't need it anymore. If anyone wants to buy it, let me know. I hear you. So. 70 Beetle. 1970 Beetle. Clean title. Not too cheap, but not too expensive. Good runner. Starts every time. Is there anything? (laughs) It's been a long time. Is there anything that you wanted to talk about or mention that we didn't, that I skipped around? Uh, I was just catching up with you. I know. There's no agenda. I, I don't know, man. I just, I feel like I said a lot. Oh, I thought you were great. I, I could listen to you for days. I think I, feel I think like I overshared. I'm an overshare. Nope. No, I think you're great. I really do. I, I'm I'm grateful for your friendship, but also for your 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 generosity with how you do share. Because I know that anytime that. I need anything, I call you or whatever, and you always get me an answer, regardless whether it's you have the answer or come in. We'll find time. We'll make it. Like whatever. You just you always take care of us, and um, and we're just really grateful for our relationship with TLG. Well, I appreciate that. I'm, I love this relationship. This works for both of us. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? <laughs> Bizarro Steve over here. That's how it That's started. Right. That's right. His Steve from his shop, this started with, I looked like the guy from his shop. He's like, hey, you got to check out this guy. He looks just like you. He's starting a podcast and all that shit. Yeah. I called you Bizarro Steve for a little while. That was like the for inside a long joke. Time. Well, then we started aging the same way. Like we got the yeah. same gray oh, yeah. and the hairline. Everything was happening the same way. Yeah. We're sharing DNA for sure. It's funny. It's a, it's a good bit, but it worked out like it led to a wonderful thing, you know, a wonderful relationship. So We saw you in your GT3 Leave you. Were, we passed on the way up to GVBC the other day. You were coming down already. Yeah. Did you have a good run? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't. I don't drive fast. I mean, I just I keep it at like 65, 70 yeah. miles an hour. But up the there, that's up. fun in those. Yeah. I, for good. me, the most fun thing is not slowing down. Yeah. It's not going fast. It's just keeping the momentum. Never going. slowing down. So like, if I go seventy miles an hour, I try to go between sixty-five and seventy miles an hour constantly. Yep. Through the, all, every corner, we whatever, you know. And maybe you just breathe the brakes a little bit or something. But I roll on and off the throttle as it as yeah. the corner goes. Yeah, yeah. And I, I went up there, and, you know, the thing is, 
I got a lot to do. I got a lot of things going on. And, you know, GVBC has gotten pretty big. <laughs> so when a lot of people start showing up, that's my cue to leave. Yep. So I'm like, I'm an early bird. Early bird. And get the I'm fuck a real out. early bird. You know, and I, and I missed mile. you guys. Like, that was the thing. I missed you guys. But when I saw you coming, I'm like, oh, shit, lights and flashing and hi. You know, but I'm like too busy and like we're driving and. That was an you extra, know. but they're all pretty big these days. But that was extra big because I think the toy drive that day. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah, I was, but I was up and and back. I mean, I, I, it was funny. I, I ran into Magnus up there, and I hadn't seen him. And he had two seven seven that day. It was cool. He did. Yeah. What was really weird is he and I have known each other twenty two years or something like that, like since two thousand two thousand one, uh, something in that that area. But. We, in the last few years, we haven't seen much of each other. And then we saw each other at Farrah's birthday. And yep. then we saw each other on the hill. And we, we got to talk more in the last, like, month than we've spoken in years. And it was great. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's really nice to catch up with people sometimes, you know? Amen. like Because if we run, each, run into each other at a thing, like, he's he's on. Like, yeah. he's being Magnus. He's not just being the guy that I met a You're long You're not time getting ago. your chill old friend, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it was just really good to catch up and—, and I shared this building experience with him, and he's like, oh, yeah. He's been like, there. Ha, ha, he's been like there. Like, having been through these things, and it was just like this shared experience, and yep. it's just really nice. And then, you know, the other people that that, that show up up there are just it's great to see them. I just, like I said, I'm up and back real quick because I got yeah, makes sense. a lot going on, and I don't need the crowd. I, just, <laughs> I don't need the crowd. You know? I'm telling you, they're all going to be like, hey, what's up with my car? I mean, usually, well, it's not what? even that. How come it's, I can't fit in? You, you can fit me in. Come on. But it's just like, you know, you the more people that are up there, the more chance there is for Incident. traffic and incidents. And like, I'd rather just be up and back by nine thirty. Amen. You know, totally. Uh, we do love it whenever you do get up there. I'm sorry. I missed you guys though. No worries. I'm trying to think, is there anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, follow, follow, follow TLG auto. Is it TLG underscore underscore auto? Yeah. Um, anything else? Is there anybody else? No, that's it. You run everything through that, right? There's not a personal one and stuff. No, I don't have a personal one. Yeah, good for you. Yeah, I just, I mean. I, don't <laughs> I have may blue, not in the future either. I don't have a blue <laughs> check mark, but. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't. You know, somebody told me that the real J Ryan 111 whatever the new account, is more likely to get verified because it's got my name in mm-hmm. it. Yep. I was like, what? Yeah. And I, I was know, like, I but there's a hundred that you just watch. <laughs> I don't, like, I don't play shit. the games, man. I, I just like, hey, this is what's going on. I'm trying to be better about putting up things you know i do a lot of story posts because it's easier yeah but like i'm trying to remember to do the posting part of it so it's a process yeah my phone's been going crazy i probably said something that pissed someone off oh it could be uh anyway thank you thank you thank you thank you for being here thank you for being our friend thank you for all of it thank you for being part of our family our porsche family it's my pleasure Um, being a part of it TLG underscore auto. Uh, let's see. We are back on Thursday with Damon Jones, as I mentioned, formerly of Singer, and he does his own thing. He's got his own uh, his own firm now, and he's launching some stuff. I don't know exactly what, but uh, we're going to find out. Could be. Could launching be. Rockets. He's pretty awesome. Um, anything else? I don't think so. I love you. We love you. We all love you at home. Please love one another. And... Um, that's it. We'll see you on Thursday with uh, Damon Jones. Thanks for hanging in there. Please follow the real J Ryan one 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 and Nicole New Life of Old Nicole. And uh, with any luck, some of the old ones will uh, will come back to us. And that's it. Oh, oh, hang on. Here's some people here. Uh, War text says Donald Montgomery, and uh, the Instagram video has ended. Says Thomas Fong. All right. <laughs> we love everybody. See you later. <laughs>